if I go on your property, right, and uh, uh, I come there with my dogs, and my dogs taking a shit on your lawn every day, I'm disrespecting you. So now if you put me in a box, I deserve that because I'm provoking, I'm poking the bear. Because it's not suppo- you're not supposed to do that. That individual is doing what they're doing on purpose. It's, it's being done on purpose to provoke you. So the way you handle that is, number one, you just mark them. I ain't fucking with you. I ain't fucking with you. I ain't saying nothing to you because I know you're full of shit. And you kind of pick up on that energy when you're dealing with people. You know? So as men, you really got to know how to conduct yourself when you're in the world. Like, you got, it's all about respect. Everything is about respect. You know? A man has to know how to respect another man. If I tell you as a man, don't do this and you continue to do it, I don't got no respect for you because I know you're not a man. You're a bitch. I can't remember the exact title, but Rango TV, to his credit, he did make a video about people being demons. This was about three or four months ago. And of course, he was criticized for being a loner. And as he said, he loves to ride solo. And there are those who accused him of being awkward and weird. I was not one of them criticizing him for riding solo. Okay. Now, did I nickname him Weirdo TV? Yes, but not for riding solo. I nicknamed him Weirdo TV for some of the things he said. Okay. Because I myself, I also love to ride solo. Okay. Especially doing the work that I do that requires a lot of alone time, studying, video editing. Okay. People have energy. They have demons on them. So from that standpoint, I do not criticize him for wanting to ride solo. But the man you see in this video is not Ringo TV. That's Donald Webb. Okay, that's a human being right there. A black man. By the way, those of you who had an issue with the tone in which Ringo TV instructed his wife, you completely disregarded the intent of that video that I titled Weird Old TV, The Perverted Poet. I called him out on something entirely different for saying men should not bring their women on camera. And then he did the same thing that he was criticizing Newbury for doing. That was the whole purpose of that video. As for the tone, he spoke to his wife. Listen, that's between him and his wife. All right. A man is supposed to give instruction to his wife. That's the way the Most High made us. Okay. The woman was made for the man. She was made to submit to the man. Okay. Under the law of Moses, the wife was considered the property of her husband. Oh, I know that's going to stir up that Jezebel spirit. <laughs> I know that's going to stir up that feminist demon. Okay. But I don't care. And while we edit, smash that like button and smash my cash up to support hard truths. Respect the grind. Nevertheless, according to Ringo TV, you know, just reading through the lines, some Edomite continues over and over again to direct his dog to poop on his lawn. So basically, we have a dog walking a dog situation. <laughs> I mean, this devil is instructing his dog to do something so foul and so wretched to another human being. For a man to do something like that is demoniacal, deplorable, and scum of the earth type behavior. Obviously, this guy has been living there for quite some time and is real comfortable getting his way. Okay, he hasn't had any issues and haven't probably hasn't had to deal with any black people in his neighborhood. So it was rather odd to him seeing Ringo TV and his family looking different from other people in the community moving there. Maybe this guy had some encounters with black people at his job. Maybe he's a manager or maybe he's a CEO of a company and he's used to having black people under him. Okay, this is common with these type of people who behave like this. I mean, obviously... It was strategic and done on purpose because he had to stand there and wait for his dog to poop. And according to Ringo, this demon has done this several times. I mean, what a coincidence, right? But continue. 
And this is why for me personally, why I don't interact with people. A lot of times you have people that, it's like demons get in them, they do stupid shit. Like for example, when you're in a community, right? Common sense tell you, if you don't live in a certain spot, don't fucking go over there. I agree. I recall Ringo saying in the video, I believe titled Humans Are Demons, that his neighbors allow their kids to wander onto his lawn and their kids are playing on his front lawn, unrestricted. So I believe this may be the same neighbor who directed his dog to poop on his lawn. Or maybe they're two different suspects. Maybe Ringo can clarify since he's the one who was involved in this situation. Because he did say there were other people in his neighborhood that he had issues with. Okay, but the scriptures say, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Do these suspected white supremacists practice this principle? Certainly not. The demon that dwells inside their vessel that does these despicable things, that demon was used to using their forefathers to do the unthinkable, the unspeakable to our ancestors during the transatlantic slave trade. So the individual who had their dog do that, the entity that's inside him, convinces him that this is the 1800s and it's okay for him to do those things. Today, that parasitic evil spirit reigns in high places. It's what I call child support principalities. Remember that the scriptures say, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual hosts of wickedness in high places. Okay. These hypocrites say in their law book that parental custody is for the best interest of the child. Yet, what do these hypocrites teach our children in school? Do they teach them what's in the best interest of the child according to the laws and statutes and ordinances of the Most High? Certainly not. Again, suspected white supremacists always attempt to invade the civil liberties of the so-called black man and he does this in his courts, he does it in corporate America, or even on your front lawn. Okay, they have no boundaries. The scriptures say they've taken crafty counsel against the chosen people of God. As I said earlier, I like to be left alone as well. Sometimes I come to the library to read, and Edomites want to come interrupt my space with small talk. But I don't lend my energy to anyone. So I just tell them to leave me alone. It's that simple. You have your space and the fatness of your land, and I don't come on your property. Okay, so respect my space. I mean, you cannot force me to talk with you, or I'll just flat out tell you, get out of my face. Okay, if you're not here to discuss reparations that you owe, get the heck out of my face. Repent of your sins. And come up out of them houses. Come up off that blood money. And follow the most high. Again, this is not the 1800s. You need to be concerned about the lake of fire that awaits you. Rather than you being in my face. Don't get me wrong. I do discern spirits. Okay, I judge the person on their character. And not their skin color. But also, I understand that Satan appears as an angel of light, as a smiling face with folly in his voice. All right? So do not be deceived and do not be naive. That's pretty much the principle that I walk by when I'm going about in my day. You know, we talk about how in a lot of urban communities, there's a lot of violence, there's a lot of... No, right here. <laughs> in communities like this, man. It's a lot of bullshit. Trust and believe, man. Y'all be thinking that everything is sweet. Nah. <laughs> it, it, in, in most instances, it's worse. <laughs> because on the outside, right? On the outside, everything looks good. But on the inside, people are still the same, man. People still the same. So whether you're in the hood, whether you're in a suburban community, whether you're in a, a nice area, or, none of that stuff means nothing. <laughs> people are the problem. It's not the area. It's just like how when people talk about 
yo, the hood is this and the hood is that. It's not the hood, it's the people. I agree for the most part. But people can repent. Demons cannot repent. That's why the scriptures say that they're scheduled for a day where they'll be cast into the lake of fire. The scriptures say death, hell, and the grave will be cast into the lake of fire. Okay, a spirit of death is a person. Person can be a spirit, but that's not necessarily a human being because you can't see the spirit unless you cross over into that spirit realm. Okay, the scriptures say we see vaguely, we see dimly. So in your dreams, you don't have any concrete information or any concrete description of what the spirit looks like. Otherwise, it might scare you. Okay, because the flesh was not meant to see in the spirit realm, at least since Adam fell from God when he fell from grace. Okay, and that's where I disagree because Ringo is on record saying that there is no such thing as monitoring spirits. And that's not true. The scriptures say the man cutting himself in the gatherings, that man had legions of demons inside him. How can that many demons be inside of one person if there is no such thing as monitoring spirits? The scripture even compares an evil spirit to an animal when it says Satan goes about seeking whom he may devour. So he must study his prey. The predator must study his prey. And that's monitoring his prey before he possesses him. And since demons cannot be omnipresent, which I do agree with him on, the demon, they traverse the planes of the spirit realm to and fro. That's why the scriptures say Satan, which means adversary, he walks about seeking whom he may devour. So the first thing demons do is seek out covenants manifested in bloodlines of human vessels. So, for example, the suspected white supremacist that Ringo described, that man has a covenant with an ancestral demon. And that demon has access to that man's bloodline because of something wicked and evil that that man's forefathers did. Not only that, the scriptures say that the Most High passes the iniquity. He visits the iniquity of the father onto the children down to the third and fourth generation. So that man there is culpable in the crimes of his forefathers because according to Ringo, he continues to practice it. And he's practicing it on his front lawn. You see that? And I just want to put things into context as well, because Rango TV has talked about demons and he's talked about them vaguely so much to the point that he has called me a demon in one of his posts. He talked about how trolls monitor what he says and how they're behaving like demons coming into his comments and the videos that they make about him. Nah, bro, you invited me in these YouTube streets saying you'll embarrass anyone who challenges you on the false doctrine of polygyny. And also, you subtly and sarcastically thanked me for freely promoting your videos because you saw that I had your name in the title of a lot of my videos. Okay, and I also had your cash app and, you know, your video, all that information in the videos that I produce. So, sarcastically, you were saying thank you for the free promotion, although you didn't mention my name. Okay, and I was the only one that did that. And also, you yourself, you want to make movies of the whole new breed situation. So, here on YouTube, it's not about monitoring spirits, okay? According to you, it's all about business. That came out of your own mouth. But in this situation that you described, near the living quarters where your wife and kids rest their head, there was a demon on your front lawn, and you certainly have the right to document the situation and garnish the pockets of that devil, 100%. When you have when you have fucked up people that are stupid, <laughs> they make it bad for everybody because that's the way I see it. If I see a fucked up dude 
and he's doing stupid shit, I look at everybody as the same. That's, that's, that's just me. If I see one person doing something stupid, it tells me about the area. And if I see another person doing something stupid, it tells me everything I need to know. I don't fuck with nobody. I agree. Although, again, I do discern spirits. The character of the person is what matters to me. But more importantly, the character of the person is what matters to the Most High God. But it's rather odd to see thousands of suspected white supremacists living in a luxurious town built on the bloodshed of our ancestors. And some of these folk are all of a sudden eager to be in your face being all friendly. Okay, that's rather suspicious to me. And I'm incredulous to that type of behavior. I, I don't trust people so easily. So when you're in my face and you're being so friendly, that's rather demonic to me. I don't just go with the wind with what everybody else is saying. So when you're saying to me that you have nothing to do with the sins of your forefathers, nah. <laughs> I don't buy that because it's giving fear. It's giving guilt. Suspected white supremacists like to play a game called figure the new black guy out. Okay, they play this game in the workplace. They play it in public settings and even where you live. I'm sure this individual tried this game with Ringo TV. Then this man probably returned back home to have a conversation with his wife about the quote-unquote new black guy. Nah, when you see me and introduce yourself, do it with your head and knee bowed and a handsome check in your hand. And moving forward, keep out of my face. I respect your space. I respect your living quarters. Or else you call the police on the black guy, right? Okay, do one to others as you would have them do unto you. Let's conclude with the scriptures. Those of you who often watch my videos, you know that Ringo TV is on record stating that the so-called black man is not under the curses of Deuteronomy 28. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through Deuteronomy 28 in its entirety in this video. Okay, I'm going to do a series on Deuteronomy 28 in the forthcoming weeks. Okay, so I'm just going to read a few verses from Deuteronomy 28, then we'll go to Deuteronomy chapter 32, then we'll conclude with the book of Numbers chapter 20. So, Deuteronomy 28 verse 16 says, Cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in the country. All right, so Ringo TV recently moved from the city of New York, from Brooklyn, okay, and now he's in North Carolina, in suburban community, okay, where so-called white folks stay at, okay, it doesn't change. <laughs> Remember Henry Louis Gates, what was that, about 12 years ago? He got locked out of his house, and the police arrested him for breaking into his own house. So someone in that gated community that saw him going about his day for all the years that he lived there, still called the police on him, knowing that he lived there. And the police that arrested him, I'm sure, knew that he lived there, okay? That's a curse. doesn't matter how much money you make, all right? Let's go down to verse 19. It says, Cursed shall you be when you come in, and cursed shall you be when you go out, okay? You just coming outside on your front lawn, okay? And a suspected white supremacist do something like that so despicable and so inhumane. But, you know, Ringo TV and other parts of the video, he was talking about his Second Amendment rights and, you know, how he lives in a gun state. Listen, you didn't make a move immediately, although you wanted to do something to that man for doing that. Because you understand that the laws of white supremacy, although it appears like that on the surface, it's not in your favor. It's not in people who look like me and you favor. Okay, and this ties also into this whole new breed situation 
where he's talking about the Gentiles coming on to UP farms and starting some sort of community where people in the end times can live in harmony and they can share all things common. Ain't that what Dirty Low Dow say? We're going to have all things common, right? And he's a so-called black man and he's oppressing his people. Look at that devil. But Ringo TV, you understand that if you took the law into your own hands, that Deuteronomy 28 verse 19 will manifest in your life. Okay, only the Most High will get us up out of this. Okay, according to the scriptures. But I'll cover that in another video, as I've covered in previous videos thus far. Check out my series, White Supremacy is a Package Deal. Okay, that series is still going on. And I'm covering a lot of these things in there, but I'm backed up with a lot of work that I'm producing at the moment. So stay tuned. Okay, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 21. It says, verse 21, they have provoked me to jealousy by what is not God. They have moved me to anger by their foolish idols. It's talking about the children of Israel and their descendants continuing but i since this is god talking but i will provoke them to jealousy by those who are not a nation i will move them to anger by a foolish nation ringo tv you were moved to anger by a foolish nation okay that's a curse all right we were never supposed to be subjected to the laws of so-called white supremacy right again but you wanted to do something to that man rightfully so okay because that's your property but the most high parallels the offense of the children of israel going after the golden calf okay then and, and if you want to translate that into modern day we're going after air jordans and all of these idols we turn people into idols we turn celebrities into idols and he's saying, I'm going to do likewise to you, okay? Just as you went after your idols provoking me to anger, I'm going to provoke you to anger by those who are a foolish nation. So the Most High put both offenses of foolishness on the same playing field. I don't know if you guys caught that in Deuteronomy 32:21. All right, but I'll revisit that in another video, as I already have in the series thus far. White supremacy is a package deal. Okay, so let's go to the book of Numbers, chapter 20. I'm going to read from verse 14 through 21. And by the way, Ringo TV, if you're watching, respond to what these scriptures say about these curses. Because it's easy to just complain about it. Well, do something about it. Yes, you can go and document it to the police and make sure you have a paper trail like you said in this video but you also need to get on your knees and repent and discuss these matters the scriptures say bring your grievances before the lord the way we come out of this captivity is through prayer all right so that the most high can judge our oppressors now that does not mean you don't stand up for yourself and your family all right but you know you do what you have to do that's your business I just wanted to put things into context using the scriptures. Okay, so Numbers chapter 20, starting at verse 14. It says, Now Moses sent messengers from Kadesh to the kingdom of Edom. Okay, so Moses and the children of Israel, they're already going through a hard time at this point. They're, they're famished. Also, Moses is a bit frustrated because Miriam, who was Moses' sister, she already died. Okay, and that's when the previous chapter, I believe the Most High, had told Moses to speak to the rock so that the children of Israel can drink the water that will come from the, the rock that will pour out from the passageway. And instead, Moses, in frustration, struck the rock with his rod. Okay? And because of that, the Most High told Moses that him and Aaron will not enter the promised land for doing that. Now, I don't understand why Aaron got punished as well, but that's maybe I need to read that over again. Or maybe you guys in the comments can let me know your thoughts on that whole dilemma. Nevertheless, that's kind of off subject. 
I just wanted to paint a picture for where they're at, the children of Israel, because this ties in to what I'm going to say to conclude this video. So continuing on, uh, Moses sent messengers from Kadesh to the king of Edom. Okay, we know Esau is Edom, saying, Thus says your brother Israel, you know all the hardship that has befallen us. Catch that. They know all the hardship that has befallen us. They know what we went through in the transatlantic slave trade. If we're going to parallel that to what the children of Israel were going through during this time period, Moses is saying, you guys know what the children of Israel went through when they were in bondage in Mizraim, which was Egypt. Continuing verse 15, how our fathers went down to Egypt and we dwelt in Egypt a long time and the Egyptians afflicted us and our fathers. Verse 16, when we cried out to the Lord, he heard our voice and sent the angel and brought us up out of Egypt. Now, here we are in Kadesh, a city on the edge of your border. Please let us pass through your country. Let us come on your property. This is really what they're saying. Okay, continuing. We will not pass through fields or vineyards, nor will we drink water from wells. We will go along the king's highway. We will not turn aside to the right hand or to the left until we have passed through your territory, your property. Verse 18, then Edom said to him, you shall not pass through my land, lest I come out against you with the sword. Now, he didn't even go through just giving him a warning. Immediately, you know, these Edomites said, we're going to come out against you with the sword because that was already in their heart. Okay, this is the ancient spirit. And we know the scriptures say, if you live by the sword, you will die by the sword. He who led into captivity shall go into captivity. Okay, that's Bible, putting things into context. And if I'm going to go deeper, God is holding this against Edom because the journey that the children of Israel went through, this is a series of events leading up to the birth of Christ. Okay, if the children of Israel didn't go through this, then how is Christ going to be birthed into the earth? And we know Christ, of course, had to die on the cross for the sins of all men. All right. So Edom is actually getting in the way of God's plan. They're being dead weight. And this is part of the reason why God is going to judge them so harshly. But there's so much to get into with that. Again, I have to cover this in a series, White Supremacy is a Package Deal. But for the sake of this video, I hope you following me. These Edomites, the same spirit that was in them here in Numbers chapter 20, is the same spirit that manifests to this day. Don't come on my property. Respect my space. Okay, that's their mentality. Okay, so if you keep that same energy, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. All right. But continuing on, they already told them we're going to come against you with the sword if you come on our territory. OK, so verse 19. So the children of Israel said to him, we will go by the highway. And if I or my livestock drink any of your water, then I will pay for it. Let me only pass through on foot. Nothing more. Verse 20. Then he said, you should not pass through. So Edom came out against them with many men and with a strong hand. Thus, Edom refused to give Israel passage through his territory. So Israel turned away from him. Okay. Now, the scriptures imply that it would take nearly 40 years, I believe, for the children of Israel to get to the promised land. Uh, now, of course, part of that was disobedience, but Lord knows how much this was a hindrance to the children of Israel that they came to their brother Esau, Edom, so that they can take a shortcut to where they needed to go. Okay, Lord knows how much that compromised them actually getting to to fulfill God's plan for them. So for you Edomites who claim you a Christian, 
you're not no Christian, okay? You who behave like this and you're what they would call patriotic, okay? Being a patriot is idolatry, okay? You hold your head up high saying that you're a patriot, that you serve this country. They use that to start a new religion called Christian nationalism. You serving this country in warfare, okay? I'm not going to get into that. But that in itself is its own offense against the Most High. Nevertheless, that concludes this video. Uh, hopefully, Ringo TV can repent. You know, you don't like to see that happening. I mean, again, my differences with Ringo TV is doctrine. Okay, as I always say, it's not personal, it's scripture. Okay, I'm not going to take the side of no man over the Most High because I have a healthy fear of the Most High. But at the same time, I hate to see people who look like me, okay, my brothers in the flesh, go through this type of foolishness, okay, especially since the oracles of God were committed to us. And if you really want to go deep, the Gentiles would not even have a shot at salvation if it wasn't for the so-called black man, all right? And I'm going to go deep into that And this white supremacy is a package deal series, all right? So stay tuned. Let me know your thoughts and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.